Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to start by, by noting my surprise to hear from my Democrat colleagues that the Mueller report is now of no consequence. After what they put this country through for years on end, endless investigations, millions of dollars spent, an impeachment inquiry against the President of the United States, and now we hear from person after person on that side of the dais that the Mueller report is of no consequence. No consequence? I kind of happen to think that the successful weaponization of the FBI by a presidential campaign, by the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign, for the first time in American history, getting the FBI to submit to a federal court false information, false information, to get a wiretap during a presidential campaign, I kind of think that that is a relevant piece of information that maybe ought to be within the jurisdiction and the cognition of this committee. Of course, now my Democrat friends say there's nothing to see here, because now we have one of the largest scandals ever to engulf the FBI and the DOJ. Let me just remind you, Mr. Rosenstein, about what the FISA court said when it found out that it had been systematically lied to by the FBI and the Department of Justice. This is what the court said, sua sponte, on its own, and I quote, the FBI's handling of the Carter Page applications, as portrayed in the Inspector General's report, was antithetical to the heightened duty of candor that is owed to the court. The frequency with which these representations made by FBI personnel turned out to be unsupported or contradicted by information in their possession and with which they withheld information detrimental to their case calls into question whether information contained in other FBI applications is reliable, end quote. In other words, the FISA court now wonders if it can trust anything that the FBI says. Anything. Now, you signed off on a FISA application to a federal court in an ex parte proceeding, which means the other side didn't have any chance to argue it. You signed off on it. It had 17 material misstatements, falsehoods, omissions. You signed off on it. You also said at the time you thought it was an above average application. Correct. How could you sign off on something with this number of misrepresentations that the FISA court later came back and said, this, this destroys our trust in the FBI? You signed off on it personally. How could this happen? I, I approved the submission of it, and, and four federal judges signed off on it too, Senator, because, like me, they believed that the information had been verified and was accurate. Did they have a duty to verify the information? No, the agents had a duty to did, verify. Oh, so you did not have a duty to verify the information? I had a duty. Your name on the application. Well, I had a duty to make sure it had been verified. Did you rubber stamp it? Senator, the, the deputy attorney general or the attorney general. Just answer my question. Did you rubber no, stamp it? You said a second ago to Senator Cruz, no, said I, I didn't rubber stamp it. If you'd like me to explain, I will. But I certainly. But you also testified to, today that you didn't read it. So I'm curious. No, I didn't say How is it? You, you, would you like us to have your testimony read back to you? You said, I can't say that I read it. I don't think I read every page. I mean. Yes, I did say that. Yes. But, okay, but, so you didn't rubber stamp it, but you didn't read it. You, you know, Senator, I have to explain the process. Um, oh, I think we're familiar with the process. No, the OIG I, gave us the process. By the time it got to you, you had 17 critical errors, falsehoods, omissions, leading a federal court to say, they have never seen anything like this, and they can't trust anything else the FBI says, and you signed off on it. How, who, let me ask you this. Who are we to hold responsible? Yes. You're saying it's not you. No, no, I'm, I'm saying, Senator, that I am accountable for it. But the question is, why did it happen? Now, I'm no longer in the department, but there are people who are there who I expect will figure out why it happened and will fix the problem. So I'm not trying to... Do you have any something. theories about what the problem might be? I, I only know what the Inspector General's report reflects, Senator. Uh, and again, I've been gone for 13 months, so I have no insight. Well, wouldn't you agree with me that a process that is so corrupted that it resulted in the abuse of a federal court in an ex parte proceeding during a presidential campaign is a threat to American democracy? Is a threat to the integrity of our elections? Would you agree with that? It, it's, a, it's certainly a threat to the integrity of the uh, judicial system and the FISA process, but... I need to explain to you, Senator, that uh, 
you know, when you're running an organization with 115,000 people, you're not going to be able to personally verify the information. No, I know. So I, and that's why you can't be held responsible. No, no, I am the FBI responsible. says they can't be I held responsible. responsible. And so at the end of the day, it's nobody's fault. No, the no, FISA no. court has been misled. The FISA court is saying we can't trust anything the FBI says, but nobody's to blame for it. So let me just ask you, who should we hold responsible? What, what do you want this committee to do? The other side wants us to do nothing. They don't want to talk about it. They're happy for these abuses to go on, apparently. What do you suggest that we do? I think, Senator, there, there are issues of accountability and blame. I'm accountable. I'm here being chastised by you, and that's part of my accountability. But the question is blame. What went wrong? And we need to figure out what went wrong. And I think it, when you say I signed off on it, it, it suggests that my responsibility was to actually do the investigation and verify the information. That, that's just not the responsibility of the deputy. The responsibility is to make sure we've got an accurate process in place that guarantees the integrity of the applications. But that, but that out, process wasn't in place. It turned out that it wasn't, exactly. And so if I'm at fault because I had a reason to know that or should have known that, I should be blamed for that. But I just don't know. I didn't see that in the IG report. I didn't see him blaming me or my predecessors. Uh, and, uh, and that's all I know about it, Senator. So I certainly am accountable for it. But in order to solve this problem, Yelling at me is not going to solve the problem. We need to figure out what happened. Did people engage in misconduct? Are there systemic problems? And fix them so it won't happen again. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Rosenstein, for your service. And, and we'll certainly, I'm sure this committee will take every pain not to hold you accountable or responsible. Apparently, we can't I hold anybody accountable. accountable or responsible, Mr. Chairman. Thank so you. I don't know what this committee has left to do, but I do know this. What has happened is unacceptable. And we've I heard agree. the FBI director sit in the seat that you're in, Mr. Rosenstein, and say he's not accountable. He says he's not making any changes. In fact, he's done nothing, the current FBI director, to address this situation. Nobody seems to want to do anything. Meanwhile, we're in another presidential election year. I look forward to hearing about how the FBI has weaponized the FISA court again in this election year. Who knows? We'll be hearing about that in two or three years from now. This circumstance is simply not acceptable, Mr. Chairman, and that's why I'm glad we're doing this, but we've got to hold somebody accountable for it. Senator, as I said, Senator I agree with you that... I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, if I could just finish the answer that, uh, again, there are questions of accountability and questions of blame, and it is the responsibility of Director Ray to solve these problems. And, and I, I don't know, uh, I'm not familiar with the hearing well, that you may reference, let, let to, me but just, I certainly hope that yeah. you solve these so problems. So here's what's happening. Uh, we have recommendations from Horowitz how to make sure this doesn't have it happen again. We've got Mr. Durham looking at criminality. And it's up to this committee to come up with a process, hopefully bipartisan, where we can make sure this doesn't happen again. And uh, we're on it. I think it's important. And I think it's important Senator Coons be called on right now. Mr. Chairman, if I could just follow up, though, because I, I'm accountable. I feel accountable for anything that went wrong in the department on my watch. But I think the issue is how do we fix the problem? I, I, I understand what you're saying. Senator Coons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, let me make sure this is on. Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Mr. Rosenstein, thank you um, for your testimony today and for your service. Uh, we have some important questions in front of us. As we know, President Trump uh, has often repeatedly and loudly called the entire Russia investigation a witch hunt. But Inspector General Horowitz found the FBI had an authorized purpose when it opened Crossfire Hurricane which was grounded in protecting our national security and investigating federal crimes. Do you agree with that conclusion? Yes, I do. Um, do you believe the whole Russia investigation was a fraud and a witch hunt? No. In your oversight role over the special counsel's investigation, uh, see if you can get him a new mic there. Can you get, is my microphone working at all? We'll try that one. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excuse me, let me try again. There is that is. much better? If I might, Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to start again. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rosenstein, thank you uh, for your testimony and for your service uh, and for your appearance before us today. Uh, President Trump has called the Russia investigation a witch hunt, which um, is in sharp contrast with Inspector General Horowitz, who concluded that the FBI had an authorized purpose when it opened Crossfire Hurricane, which was grounded in protecting our national security and investigating federal crimes. Do you agree with that conclusion? I agree with uh, Inspector Horowitz's conclusion, yes, sir. In your oversight role uh, over Special Counsel Mueller's investigation, did you ever raise a concern 
about the appropriateness of the investigation and prosecution of Michael Flynn? I was not aware of any reason to question the appropriateness at that time. You were the acting attorney general for that investigation. Did you approve of his guilty plea? Yes, sir. Based on my understanding that the evidence demonstrated his guilt and he and his attorneys admitted his guilt. Um, did you ever raise any concerns about whether Flynn's false statements were material to the FBI's national security investigation? I was not aware of any issue. And are you aware of any precedent for the Department of Justice moving to dismiss a case after a defendant pled guilty to lying to the FBI? I, I don't know the answer to that, Senator. There may be. I, I'm, I'm not personally aware, but uh, the department certainly has moved to dismiss cases in the past. You authorized filing the indictment in the Roger Stone case as well, correct? Correct. And a jury convicted Roger Actually, Stone let me, of the seven uh, felony if, counts. If I could just clarify, I believe that uh, I don't believe I was acting attorney general at the time the Stone case was filed, so I'm certainly aware of it, but I don't know that I, uh, uh, as a legal matter, I don't know that I authorized it. In any event, a jury ultimately convicted Roger Stone of seven felony counts in the indictment. Um, do you think Roger Stone committed those crimes of which he was convicted? Based upon the jury's verdict, yes. And in the Roger Stone case, career prosecutors filed a sentencing motion and the political leadership of the department filed a different motion within a day. The career attorneys then withdrew from the case and one went further and resigned from the department. Are you aware of any other recent case where political appointees filed a sentencing recommendation that is so markedly different from what career prosecutors had filed? I understand your question, Senator. The only issue I would take with it is that technically every pleading we filed contains the name of the U.S. attorney. Um, you're focusing on whose signature appears on the document, but all those documents are filed in the name of the U.S. attorney, and I considered U.S. attorneys responsible for them. Do you think a president should publicly criticize, question, or attack ongoing Department of Justice investigations? I'm not going to comment on the president, Senator, as I think I've made clear. Uh, I understood the president's frustration. Uh, and I don't think it's my job to comment on how he articulates. A recent poll found that 37% of Americans have a positive view of the FBI. And that's from an NBC poll. I wouldn't exactly call that uh, right media propaganda. And I think I know why. Here's what the American people know and believe about the FBI today, sir. If you are a Trump, you'll be prosecuted. If you are a Biden, you'll be protected. And the American people that I represent are sick and tired of this double standard. It seems like every single hearing that we have in this room, we talk about the two-tiered justice system of Biden DO, uh, Biden's DOJ and the FBI. And as we were talking earlier, here we are again. President Trump endured an unprecedented raid at his home in Mar-a-Lago. President Biden's home, however, was respectfully browsed. President Trump is facing up to 400 years in federal prison for allegedly being in possession of classified documents he obtained as the commander in chief of these United States of America. And meanwhile, President Biden is facing no charges for the classified documents he had held at his time as a senator and a vice president, not the president of these United States of America. And last I checked, he had no legal authority to declassify those documents. Assuming President Trump was in possession of said classified documents, would those documents be more secure, surrounded by Secret Service at Mar-a-Lago, or in a box, in a garage, behind your Corvette? No, the answer to that question. Question for you, sir. What can you tell us about the status of the FBI's investigation of President Biden's classified documents found next to his Corvette in Delaware and those found at the Penn Biden Center? Do we have an update on that, sir? What I can tell you is that there is an ongoing special counsel investigation led by Mr. Robert Herr, uh, and we have FBI agents uh, affiliated with it, working on it, working very actively and aggressively with him on that case. Um, I obviously disagree with your description of...